Welcome to this new episode of Yacht Talk. We are in St. James's in the heart of London to meet one of the world's most famous yacht brokers, Mr. Jonathan Beckett, Joff of Burgess. Good morning, Charlotte, and welcome to Burgess. Thank you very much. Here's a little gift wow. for you from the Netherlands. The how very famous Heeson waffles. Lovely. And some tulips. Oh, how wonderful. Thank you so much. Very welcome. Thank you for having us today. Ah, well, you're most welcome. Throughout your career, you have orchestrated the sale of many famous yachts, super yachts. Uh, anyone uh, in particular that sticks to your mind? Something quite memorable? Probably the most memorable deal that I did, which was in 1987, as, as a 29-year-old young man, I sold Adnan Khashoggi's Nabila to Donald Trump um, in December 1987, and that in its day, we sold it for $30 million, and that in its day represented, you know, tw the largest deal by double of any previous deal that had occurred. And of course, dealing with Khashoggi, the Sultan of Brunei, because he had repossessed the boat from Khashoggi, and, and with Donald Trump was, you know, really quite an experience as a young man. Tell us about your collaboration with Heeson. When did it all start? Our collaboration with Heeson started actually, um, you know, probably 30 years, soon after they, they started. Um, and we, we sold a couple of, we sold and managed two or three of their very early boats, um, and uh, Ladyship being one of them. I remember Octopussy, which was a very famous boat, and uh, there was a boat called, I want to say it was called Ecstasy, and we sold that. Um, in total, we've sold something like 20, 24 or 25 Heesons over the years, new and second hand. We've built a number of yachts with them, and we've got I think we've got 14 or 15 Heesons in our charter fleet at the moment. I think they understand what the market wants. I think that they're, they're building a product that the market is keen to, you know, keen to have. And that has been, over the years, you see some of the designs coming out from different shipyards or designers, which are very bespoke to one person. Whereas I think that the Heeson product has, you know, it appeals to 70% of the market as opposed to, 20 or 30 percent of the market. Um, the quality is very good, the price point is very good, and you know that a lot of their boats have a, quite a good turn of speed and that's very attractive for um, a lot of clients, you know, not to be cruising along at 10 or 12 knots, but to, to be cruising at sort of 16, 18, 22 knots. Speed is important because I hear they're very busy at the moment, so tell us about your, your appreciation of the market currently. What trends are you seeing? The market is on fire at the moment. It's absolutely extraordinary, and everybody would say that, I think. Um, there's this sort of big appetite to, from people to buy yachts, and, and we could never have written this 12 months ago, you know, 12 months ago, 14 months ago, when the pandemic was sort of getting grip. You know, we were really planning for the worst. We were hoping for the best, but planning for the worst, as were many people. And, you know, we took all sorts of precautionary measures, um, the charter market fell off the edge of a cliff. The yacht, the yacht sales market fell off the edge of a cliff. But come July last year, the market started moving again. And from August last year, we've had a record number of sales. Um, and none of them have been at sort of knockdown prices. They've all been at, you know, good, good market level prices. Um, so I think the pandemic has made a lot of clients feel mortal as opposed to immortal. So it's this carpe diem feeling, isn't it, where people want to enjoy life simply? Yeah, yeah. I, that's it. They want, to, they want to be safe and they want to enjoy life. And, and I think the yacht, you know, particularly if you have your own plane, you know, you fly from your home in your own plane, you get on board your own yacht, and it's a sort of secure environment. But it, there's something for everybody on board the boat. A yacht will encompass many different age groups, you know, from people in their 70s, 80s, down to, you know, grandchildren who are probably, you know, less than 10 years old. 
So lots of new, younger clients arriving on the market. What do you think the buyer of 2030, let's look forward a little bit, will be looking for? What, what's very interesting at the moment, there, there are a lot of new buyers in the market and a lot of younger buyers. Um, the younger buyers tend to be looking at relatively moderate, a, a Heaton, for example, is the perfect product for, for the younger buyer. Um, and what, what's going to be very interesting over a period of time is I think the, the super yacht market will explode in, in 10 years' time. But we're seeing young people at the moment who probably don't aspire to owning a super yacht as those sort of, you know, clients in their late 20s or early 30s get into their mid-40s and they're married and they have kids of their own. And then I think we're going to see this sort of explosion of them moving up in, into the super yacht market. Because if you look at the wealth curve, the wealth curve is going like that and actually the super yacht market is, is more level. It's not keeping pace with the wealth curve. But I think we'll suddenly see a big uptick in that in seven to ten years' time. Let's talk in greater details about the uh, appetite out there from the, the, the youngest generation of, of yacht owners. Any particular features, destinations that they are looking for? How do you see it evolving, really? We're definitely seeing the younger generation wanting to go further afield. You know, they, they are looking to go exploring and or on an expedition. Um, so the, the sort of advent of the sort of expedition yacht not necessarily, it's got to look sort of really brutal, but, you know, something that is maybe ice class and, you know, helicopter capable, uh, long distance cruising um, will, will definitely be a big tick for, for, those, for those clients. And also, they're much more conscious about the environment. So, you know, pretty much all, all the new construction projects that we're getting involved with now, everyone is looking at trying to be much more environmentally friendly and they're, they're very keen to understand what they can do with the yacht to make it um, a greener vehicle for this world. Arthur Brower, CEO of Heaston, has recorded a video for us talking about the trends he's seeing currently in the market. Shall we take a look? I'd love to have a look. Thank you very much. Hello, Arthur. Hi there. Hi. Good to see you again, Charlotte. Good to see you too. So Arthur, can you give us a quick update for the shipyard? Because I hear it's been busy. Yeah, it has been very, very busy. Uh, not only recently, but the last months. First of all, we had shift work here in the company for the last six, seven months. But recently we went back to day shifts, as we call it. So we're in full production mode. And that's needed because we have 12 ships in build right now, actual, and we just have delivered, and that's also a lot of work to, in the recent uh, two months, two of our vessels to uh, their customer. So what do you think is behind this level of activity? What's behind the rise of sales at the moment, especially given the situation with COVID? Yes, we, we had a very, very, uh, you could say even bumpy ride last year because in the first six, seven, eight months of the year, uh, sales went down rapidly. We sold one of our boats uh, in the beginning of uh, 2020, but then it became a rather silent in the, in the sales market. Um, in Q4, everything changed. It changed in such a way we have never seen before in the recent, uh, let's say, 10, 15 years. We sold a lot of our yachts, uh, uh, luckily. So it has been a roller coaster, a lot of sales have been delayed so people came back to the market when the the financial market stabilized and were buying an, a super yacht luckily also with us that trend also was was and is pushed in in 2021 we've sold two new vessels and the activity of request is still high now what is really interesting in the market is that we don't only sell or yachts to what we call boaters people who own a yacht already but even we've had some new entrants in the market stepping from zero meters to a 50 meter yacht for instance and that's not uh, something which happens a lot of time in this industry Arthur what changes do you expect post-covid in the yacht market what's different as a result I think we have new entrants that new entrants will uh, will help us to reach 
broader groups of potential customers. So I think our customer base could be enlarged uh, a little bit because there are not so many uh, potential customers in these markets, but it will be a bit broader, that's one. Secondly, what I also see happening is that people who buy one of our speculation yachts want to have changes at the end phase of the speculation build. Normally we sell a yacht which is almost ready with minor or media changes, but we, now we also have customers who really are changing quite a bit. They want it now, but they also want to have it totally to their liking. And that dynamic is helping us with the flexibility we have here to reach another level of uh, customer satisfaction. Arthur, I'd like to ask you a more personal question now. What are you most looking forward to during the second half of the year? Uh, not only me, but what the team is looking forward to is that we have direct interaction again with, uh, with customers, their teams, but also with crews and brokers. So we're looking really forward to the opening of the yacht sales season in Monaco, but also in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, and be in touch in a casual way with our customers instead of having an appointment with all the forms you have to fill in to come to the Netherlands would really benefit our interaction with the clients, but also with, let's say, exploring potential clients and making new contacts. Okay, Arthur, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. So, Joff, what do you think? Agree? I, I think, you know, it's very interesting, you know, when you're talking to, you know, the, le the leaders in the industry, you know, whether they be, you know, sh shipyard representatives or brokers, everyone has this great feeling, as Ar Arthur, you know, very correctly summed up there, that there is this, you know, great drive of people looking for safe, secure environments, and there is no better place to go than on a yacht. As a result of the pandemic, many events, boat shows in particular, have been cancelled. Has it affected you? What, uh, how have you reacted to this? It hasn't affected our business. I think it has affected us in, in a way that, you know, they're, they're great events to, to meet other industry colleagues. They're great events to meet clients. But in fact, you know, we don't conduct very much business at a boat show as such. Um, and we're doing just as much, if not more, business by not attending the boat shows. I think, it, you know, a boat show is is a great celebration of super yachting. I think we're going to reevaluate how we how we attend boat shows going forwards, and you know what the aim of the boat show is, and the people that we're going to invite. I recently had the pleasure to meet um, Dickie Ballenberg in his studio, and he had a question for you. Right. Okay. So let's take a look. I'm curious to know. I mean, Joff's been in the, in at the helm of Burgess for ever, forever. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, so I think it'd be interesting to know what the first, his first yacht sale was. And how it went. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not, not, yes. Okay, so first went, so. boat sale and how it went. So the very first yacht that I sold, sort of single-handedly if you like, um, was a 76-foot steel motor yacht built in Holland. And the boat was sitting in the old port of Cannes. And I sold it in 1983 um, from a British scrap metal merchant to an Israeli. And we sold it for £42,000. And I think the commission was £2,500. And I remember after, after we'd closed the sale and I arrived back in the office in Monaco, Nigel Burgess was standing there with a bottle of champagne and some glasses and... Um, and the two of us sort of drank the champagne to celebrate me getting off the starting blocks. A good memory. Yeah, great memory. Okay, so it's now your turn to ask our next guest a question. It will be Ben Harrison of Harrison and Eidsgaard. So what's your question to him? I know Ben very well and we, we've done some projects together. Um, so Ben, if you were not a yacht designer what, and you wanted to work in the yachting industry, what would your favourite job be other than doing yacht design? OK, so Ben, if you were not a yacht designer but would still be working in the yachting industry, what would you do? Joff, thank you so much for being with us today. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Most welcome. 
So that's it from us at Yacht Talk, but stay with us. Next time we'll meet Ben Harrison of Harrison Eidsgard. In the meantime, keep yachting. <laughs>